Not in the end, <laughs> coming in from, uh, from well. TT, but I, I do like the point that you mentioned that actually Xiaopeng is currently our highest ranked LPL player in uh, Korean solo queue. So that's yeah. probably a big reason that TT will bring him back into the starting lineup. But now that we're into pick and pad for Eastar and TT, Eastar on blue, TT on red. Remember that I already mentioned that Eastar have a really high thresh band against ratio. 71% is the rate against Xiaosi's thresh. And if it gets left open here, which it will, we'll see what Eastar's priority is. At the very least, Clement, we, we know how this goes. It's either Udyr or Kaisa. What do Eastar want? I definitely favor the uh, the Kaisa a little bit. I'm still still not a, completely sold on the Udyr hype train. We have seen a lot of teams go into this, but if the early game skirmishes don't pan out, this is not a pick that gets you through team fights. So, you know, E stars are gonna <laughs> disregard me and still go for the Udyr. But what this means is I do want to see a more skirmish based uh, composition come out of them. I think if you're going into the Udyr, things like Aatrox make a lot of sense. Things like Renekton mid make a lot of sense. You basically want an accelerated game plan where you want to play around the strong 2v2s or the strong okay. 3v3s on the top side of the map. It's interesting though, because the Camille and Kaiser first pick enables like that real engage from TT, right? Usually we see it paired up with something like the Galio, something that can facilitate from the mid lane. So for TT, maybe to play around one of those solo lanes and draw away the Udia Clement, uh, we'll wait and see what Eastar's response to that is. Yep, TT for me, they have a more standard draft. You were mentioning the Cannonball composition. The Galio can definitely come out, and this should be a fairly easy um, support or mid lane flex. You can pick it here and be happy that uh, even though Oriana has the better side of the matchup, mm. that uh, Galio can still be flexed elsewhere. So they're setting themselves up for a very flexible composition. It has side lane advantage as well. Ooh. And the Sejuani is an interesting okay. one. We you know why that feels good? Clement, right? That feels Fine. good because you have a you have an, a melee top laner to pair up for Xiao Peng, and we yeah. saw in the clips that like that's where he partnered up. That's where he sent himself. Precision Protocol does give you two stacks of the uh, the melee passive instantly, and you know that goes a long way to shoring up the stun. And we did see TT also run Renekton mid. I really like this combination because with Ruthless Predator, you actually just put three stacks with the Sejuani passive. So you get a very, very fast stun. It's basically stun, auto attack into a second stun follow up by Sejuani. So very easy to get kills that way. But of course, I forgot to mention that Renekton has already been taken out of the band. That is. So is Galio though. So let's, you know, partner up with what we see. The cannonball part in the Galio taken away. I want to see if E-Star continue towards mid lane and look at something like the Twisted Fate. Or if they go elsewhere, because we still don't have that support we mentioned for Xiaosi. We still don't have that other solo laner. Very easy for E-Stars to predict where everything's going, because it's pretty straightforward. I do think E-Stars, uh, you know, they're the ones that, uh, they, that like the Thresh pick a lot more. That one's going to be taken away, like you mentioned. Oh. What they're looking at right now is, I would probably consider uh, some of the support picks. I think Rel is one that's hu been huge in the recent... A uh, couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of players really go for that combination with the crash down into the ultimate that helps out with the front line. Unfortunately, they're not going to be taking that one away. I'm um, a little bit surprised by that one. I think that was probably the premier support that we're seeing coming out of the bot lane right now. But uh, they're going to be taking away the Azir instead, which does have priority over the Orianna. And now it's TT's turn to just respond. I'm looking at something that's just a stable front line. Uh, Leona is going to be perfect here. You know, a lot of kill pressure with the Kaisa lane. The sunlight into the Akathi and Rain combination has been really, really popular in the LPL for a long time. And that is going to be their lock-in. Um, on E-Stars, on e -Stars and I, I do want to see a little bit more skirmishing potential. We have seen a lot of Orianna plus uh, Udyr combinations where Udyr just runs at their target and it's kind of like a guided missile composition. But... I don't think the two champions actually synergize that well in the early game. You can't really skirmish around the Orianna. So it looks like they're, they're going to have to find uh, another lane to go to. And this Rikus is also a bit more of a defensive pick uh, against the Camille too. So uh, overall for me, E-Stars, they're, they're shaping up to have a very strong team fighting composition where they have great front line. They have a lot of disengaged tools to set Rap up properly. But uh, the power with Udyr don't really line up with the rest of the members. At least, you know, skirmishing through. I know you don't like it. I know a lot of you color casters just keep talking shit on Udyr, but let's be quite honest, you know. At the moment, seen as that great frontline hexic, uh, the turbo chem tank to run directly at your enemies. And I'm going to pause before we actually see this. This was something special that we got out of a, a previous mid laner in Teacher Ma. 
But the engage you talked about, the team fighting, Clement, I like you bring up these points because it does feel like E-Star have optimized nicely. Uh, but we've got Twyla on the Syndra here, so running into the Orianna. Bit of a range advantage here. And Mr. Chu, I want you to walk me through what TT look like with the Camille, who's such a volatile lane. So we do see TT with a lot more pick potential. They have a lot of members that can do instant engages. Actually, outside of the AD carry, every single member has a hard crowd control. So if TT get ahead, they can open up on targets. There's a lot of pick potential here, like we mentioned. On the other hand, for E-Stars, I think this is a much slower composition. It's about controlling terrain, making sure that the enemy can't walk down ramps. So this is a team that wants to stick as five and get to objectives before the enemy team and just make sure they don't get picked off on their way there. I like that. Get the setup and make sure you're in a favorable position. E-Star and TT about to kick off. And remember, this is a, a game to keep yourself out of the bottom, out of the, out of the, I was going to say out of the trash, out of the mud. Feels like the, the way to keep it civil and you know, for Tita, it's for TT and Easter. Oh God, this is gonna be this is gonna be a long series. Uh, I'm expecting this to be a little bit back and forth. Both these teams have had mistakes with cleaning out games. You know, the early game hasn't always been the issue, but we get into advanced skirmishes. We get into second, third dragon, and it feels like a lot of these teams' decision making falls off a little bit. But we'll see today. Hacker versus Shao Pung, bit of a highlight matchup here for you. And see what Xiao Pung can do on this Sejuani with a melee uh, top laner. And don't forget, if Teen starts roaming with him, uh, easy way to get that permafrost and get some stuns down and add some CC. TT and E start running in. We've got the Chinese New Year celebrations up and about getting towards the Spring Festival holiday. Exciting stuff here. And can't wait to get into what I think will be a very interesting day. We are heading into the ear of the ox, so everything yes, has been are. switched over to these uh, New Year celebrations. Chinese New Year is going to be a two-week break for us in the LPL. It's a very important time for a lot of these teams to actually get their heads together, make their final roster moves, and get prepared for that stretch heading towards MSI. Uh, teams always look differently when they come back from the break. Uh, that was a nice little picture in picture. We got to see <laughs> the same thing as on the screen. Uh, he started just dropping a deep blue ward to spot out this start here. It is Xiao Peng who placed a ward himself. And I believe he placed the ward. That's what we were showing. Goes back for the lens. A very common tactic that's been used by a lot of junglers, a lot of supports here in the LPL. Yeah, allows you to get a very strong... Um early gank in if you drop the ward and go back and uh, swap but i, I believe shaosi didn't actually go back for the red it's just going to be uh, a bit of an information gathering trip and uh, so both sides are going to know that uh their starts were basically in the bottom just judging on the the timers when the dual lanes show themselves so this should be you know i, I expect this to be a fairly quiet early few minutes right here since yeah. uh jungle pathing has been known by either side what i will say about this map so far is that i think there's a fair chance for tt to actually just run away with the early game but that said trade's going on yeah pulverize comes down just a bit of a trade on to route remember sam d halo blades the usual but chelsea is a good deferring factor for the leona something while we've seen this alistar so heavily prioritized the ability to just bop away and end the train quickly ZS getting a little bit worse on the trade so far. Pretty interesting. Chalitza just hooking in at level 2. And what I did want to mention that there is a fairly good chance for uh, Chalitza to run away with this matchup if he gets ahead. We are looking at triple AP damage sources in the top side of the map. So it's very easy for Chalitza to itemize against that if he gets yep. to sustain early, if he gets the Merc Treads early as well. If he gets ahead then, you know, there's no one really here to stop him, and there's no silent threat either. So I do think that this is a potential win condition that even though TT doesn't really play through their top lane, they could throw Chalitza a bone, give him a little bit of resources, and there's very good returns if they decide to do that. And that's why I like the ward placed down by Chalitza. It goes into the enemy jungle, spots out where Hacker is. Tracking that Udir is half of the battle. If you know where he is, he has a very predictable path. You know how fast he clears, and you know he's going to run at you as well with the flash in hand. So knowing that towards the top side, Hacker's there. Chalitza's paying the respect and not over pushing this lane and making sure he can get up to that side lane status you were talking about. Because for TT Clement, let's just walk through the comp again. Did I jinx him? 
We're about to find out. Hackers level four, Chalisa three has the hook shot and he's waiting, but that's the respect playing close to the minion wave as well. Yeah, I like what Chalitza did here. He went for the early ward. He definitely knows where the Udyr pathing is. So he's just going to let the wave push back into him. He had an early shove, and now he can control the wave in a very comfortable position. In the meantime, Xiaopun's going to go into the backside. He's going to be able to split the uh, the scuttles, which is quite important because Udyr early on has such oh, a strong God. dueling potential oh, that if he wants to go for the double scuttle, you actually can't go for it um, as a Sejuani. That was a bit of a disaster of CS. Everyone who's got OCD is <laughs> just... Uh, that hurts so much. I think three CS missed by Irma at the turret as a massive wave Ooh. pushes in. It'll reset in a second. After... Did he miss a cannon? I, I'm not sure if he missed a cannon, but I just know that he tried to command attack for a uh, ranged minion, and the damage was definitely off, as I didn't see any of the gold go down, so... Uh. You know, at the very least, the back timing was nice for Twyla, who comes back with a tear in hand. Hacker now going for the invade, and look how silent Xiao Peng is, waiting for the permafrost. It'll land out onto Hacker, and with the aftershock damage, Hacker needs to back away. Bear stands out, and Xiao Peng regains dominance, and this means Rat and Xiao Si will have to show the same respect that Hacker just did. A lot of patience coming out from Xiaopeng. He had those two wards on the bottom side around the crux. So he knew that this Uder was coming in. He just goes for one single rotation. Nothing traded back on Hacker's end. And that pretty much means that the bot lane for E-Stars who were pushing, they can't really press their advantage. They know they don't have the jungle support. They're going to have a let off a little bit. And uh, meanwhile, in the mid lane, we do see Twyla actually just playing out this laning phase really, really well. This is considered a bit of a counter matchup to Syndra into the Orianna. And he's actually just got a free teleport off of Irma. Yep, using the TP back. Just a note, Clement referring to the Twyla teleport still in hand. Scatter the Week, good dodge away from in the mid lane. Meanwhile, uh, I want to return back to what we were saying. That's a body slam, but nothing more. So how did TT play out this early game, Clement? What do comps look like for you? Because you did say it was going to be slow. And we're going to have to wait for, you know, maybe first 10, 15 minutes of the game before we see anything explosive. Um, this could be disastrous for Chalitza. He's pushing out. The wave's not favorable. The body slam there. Explosive cast dodged. Hook shot, wall shot. The stun is late. Hacker burnt the flash and they didn't wait for Chalitza to use his spells. Yeah, that was a bit of a misplay mechanically. ZS definitely had a pretty easy ultimate to get the knockback onto Chalitza or at least hold his abilities to try and stop the hook shot. He really didn't do either and uh Chalitza gets to get out of jail for free that was uh that was I'm, I'm so surprised that he didn't have to use his ultimate didn't have to burn his flash and was able to get so much out of e-star's top and he already burnt the teleport so he doesn't have to teleport in he was healthy enough used the last refillable potion and he has a biscuit in his inventory so now is able to back away for a little bit and uh, we'll see if this back actually comes through the wave pushing against him but feels pretty nice after everything committed. Now Hacker with no flash becomes even more predictable than what we were talking about before. But Clement, I do want to revisit what you want to see from these two teams. Our win conditions as well while the game is a little bit slower. So I think it's pretty difficult for E-Stars to actually find any action in the early game. Their composition doesn't have the best skirmishing potential. Um, so what I do think is going to happen is that E-Stars are going to be the one that, you know, decides to scale up a little bit and head into these drakes. I think these drakes are the most important thing for them. And I do want to mention that E-Stars is a team that does favor the blue side quite a bit. What they like to do is they like to uh, play on this blue side, get into the river first, and just hold these ramps coming in from blue and coming in from the right side of mid lane. Um, with their composition in Orianna and Gragas, they can do this very effectively. If you don't position correctly, if you don't move into the river as a unit, then they can split you up with the explosive cast or just get you with the uh, the ultimate shockwave coming out. But unfortunately for E-Stars right now, they really have lost a lot of tempo, especially in mid lane. Yeah. And they're also, uh, we're bleeding out a little bit in CS on the bottom side as well with that failed gank onto the top side. So we're not going to see any of that. I think E-Stars, you know, they have been a team that can comfortably just scale up a little bit. They, they're not actually going to force things that much. But, uh, you know, with that, even with that first rate going over TT, I still think that's going to be the plan for E-Stars. Just make sure you have that five man in the river first. Okay, waiting for the numbers advantage. They're going to utilize that in the top lane for now. Irma's roamed up as well, but he won't be able to find anything apart from that ward. Hacker goes in, steals the red buff, and Xiaopeng unawares to this for now. 
Actually, we're going to be going to the Raptors. He is not going for the Vertical Jungle himself, as far as I know. Apologies, we didn't actually get to see that on the camera, but... Hacker, of course, with a bit of a CS lead. It is Sejuani versus Udyr. We know again how fast he clears with Phoenix Stance, which is getting nerfed in the next patch, thankfully. So, we're not going to get too much of this again. But just going back to his blue, Hacker continues the momentum. He's going to pass that one off to Irma. He's going to try and use it to increase that clear speed. As bottom side, we're in, going for a bit of an engage. Solfer used for the Blade Caller. We're just waiting for that, rather. Team flashes away. Two-man pulverize. Double. That's nice, but can he kill anyone? And Rat kind of misses the feathers. They don't fly. Shousey got a good engage, but Rat just not in the right position, and it falls flat. A triple summoner trade coming out from both sides, definitely with E-Stars coming out ahead here. Um, but uh, I, I think what this is going to impact is mainly the gank potential from Xiaopeng coming in. Zaya is on a very long cooldown with her ultimate, with that uh, uh, feather storm, so that does open up Xiaopeng a potential gank avenue if he decides to take it. In the meantime, Hacker is going to use all that CS advantage and just transfer that into a Herald, which is actually completely uncontested. They're also roaming their yep. bot side, which just won the trade here. Feels pretty nice. E-Star, you know, again, kind of winning through a lane that we didn't expect to talk about. A Rat and Chelsea, remember, absorb the deficit. They absorb the pressure for E-Star a lot of the time. But what we just saw there was really nice, even though I feel like Rat kind of screwed it up. But Herald picked up by Hacker feels really nice when you've got a lot of avenues to place it down. TT trying to make a response play here, Clement, and trying to get some more gold onto the map with Twyla in a very favorable position in his wave, adding a bit more pressure. Yeah, I do like this bot focus from the bottom lane. Uh, we did see that the bot side coming out from TT because they didn't roam for the Herald. They are going to get into their lane first. They're using that party to make sure they get vision and hopefully transfer that into a pick here. We also see that mid lane has a lot of priority on the side of Twyla. So they're setting up for a potential 4v2. They're going to make sure that this jungle side is completely cleared off. But on the meantime, I really like what Hacker is doing right here. He knows that his bottom lane needs help. He's going to be in here around. for position. So the plague probably not going to come through. Just waiting at the very least. Takes the back though. And TT, yet yeah, they pull off as well. Timers on the board. We're actually not seeing our timers at the moment. Kind of strange. Our dragon timers disappeared. We've decided to get rid of Dragon. What we're going to add in is, instead is a massive frog. And what happens is when the players kill it, the map warps and it changes into a different Summoner's Rift. I feel like I should be a game designer. To oh be honest, God. to be honest, we, I'd probably I'm get so fired scared. after the first day. <laughs> no, no, no. You're going to give them so many ideas, man. You know, you, you don't, don't reveal it all, okay? Some of the designers might actually be listening right here. I'm not no, sure which okay. frog you're talking about, but uh, please, please don't let it happen. No, I, no, no. I like the riff. <laughs> you know, be, be on, I'll be honest. If anyone takes my ideas and use them, as long as they credit me, I'm, I'm okay with that. So we'll see. Hacker doesn't have hex flash, but it has a real flash. Is he going to burn it? You know he will. Chilling smite waiting. Scatter the weak hits and Hacker decides not to. He gets a stun, but it's really not enough. Even with a flashless Syndra. Yeah, uh, that was uh, pretty interesting. Flash. I felt like Irma definitely could have used a shockwave right there, but the bot lane from the enemy team was missing, so they didn't go for that one. You can see a lot of pings from E-Stars coming out onto the bottom side. They're saying, hey, where is this Kai'Sa? Where is this Leona? Probably a bit afraid about the fight getting turned on, so they don't actually punish Twyla for that instance. Or we could replace the dragon with a giant kangaroo, Clement. You know, that get that so Australian strange. on Summon Australia. I'll tell you one thing that was cool. When the OCE server opened and it was the first Christmas, they renamed Baron and Dragon to Bazza and Dazza to keep, uh, you know, the Australian lingo alive. Oh I am God. just changing the subject because that mid lane engage wasn't too great. Uh, up in this top lane, ZS with a base damage explosive cast waiting for the next body slam. But I don't think he has the damage to kill him as Chalitza will walk away. Meanwhile, Shousey with a headbutt pulverized as well. Sends team into Hacker. The stun comes down as Irma. Shockwave available. Blade caller ready to be sent out. And there we go. First blood for Rat finally at 13 minutes in the game. Weird pathing coming out from Thunder Talk. They actually had a two man in the river when their mid lane was going all the way back to base. They get caught out and punished for that in a 4v3, which Sandy honestly couldn't join. And this should be Hacker waiting to get a little bit more damage onto this tower before dropping the Herald. Now that Xiaopeng shows up, uh, they probably think better about this play, but they could definitely move a lot okay. of gold here, and they could still use the fork for the Drake. Herald's going to come down. That means turret aggro is secured. 
pack are moving uh, up, and uh. Rat wants to share this as well. They do take the aggro. Their Herald still oh, charged, and it's dead. No. Oh, my God. Xiaopeng did a nice job there, but he's uh, biting off a bit too much in the play. Shockwave using the mid lane, but Irma doesn't have kill threat. Teens coming up as well. Hacker still charging in. Sam D has both of his summoners. He flashes away from the headbutt pulverized. Shousey now gets tagged down. Sam D already burnt the flash, but has the heal. Chooses not to go forward. And I have to say, Clement, this series so far is delivering by what we expected with a capital F on Fiesta. Yeah, this has been a bit disappointing. That's why I thought that they might leave the Herald for a later use, but they actually just drop it in the middle of a minion wave. And honestly, e should have had this Drake. They had the kill advantage, they had the Herald fork, but they messed it up so spectacularly that actually TT manages to go onto the Drake stack. That's just a... Uh, that's just not what's supposed to happen and, right here. And, and meanwhile, Irma, we saw the Shockwave use mid and Teen roaming up. He has to burn a flash after doing the do -si do through the river. And I, I wish I wore my cowboy pants here today because it does feel like it's going to be a hoot. This is E-Star and TT. We're 14 minutes in with one kill. E-Star have a 1,500 gold lead in this game. And, you know, that's great. But it just feels like one move is going to decide the game at, at 30 minutes. I'm going to leave it to that, and we're going to see if it comes true. So the big difference right here is that uh, TT aren't going to feel forced to actually walk into these drakes. So even if E-Stars manage to get the perfect situation where their five-man stop stacked onto the drakes, they have priority, they have the ramps covered, what TT could actually do with these early two drakes is just try to extend the game and try to play for a split push scenario. They could have Camille just farming the side lanes and going like, hey, you know what? We are willing to trade these objectives for extra gold onto our Camille. That's going to break open this game. So, you know, these first two drakes, it really is a detriment to E-Star's game plan. And I feel like it does open themselves up to vulnerabilities from split pushing. It really does. I, I want to point out, while we are getting our first Mythics on the board, Clement, we are going back to an old favorite. Uh, the Trinity Force has been picked up by Chalitza. This is an item we saw a lot of the Camille Tops move away from because Divine Sundra, especially against the Gragas matchup or any of the tank bruises, was always a better item choice. Yeah, the main difference here is the damage compared to the front line and to the back line. And what we have seen from Chalitza is the way he team fights, he and Xiaopong basically just aim for the back line. If they can take down Rat at the start of this fight, then Isar doesn't really have a lot of damage. They have Gragas and Udyr that, uh, you know, honestly fall off quite hard into the late game team fights. So that's why I think Chalitza is going for the Triforce instead of something more split push oriented, like the Divine Center that definitely does better against Gragas. I do like that as well. So we'll be watching for that backline access onto Rat. You already talked about the, the damage that is lacking here across the team. For E-Star as well, a lot of key ultimates to watch out for. The explosive cast, the shockwave, you know, how Chelsea gets his headbutt pulverized as well. E-Star are currently aggressing on the mid lane turret. Chelsea, or rather ZS, excuse me, level 11 Gragas wants to come in. There's the frozen prison as the shockwave against the wall sends team to his decimation. Twyla ults as well. A one for one trade at DT. They've got side lanes pushing. Meanwhile, Clement, that's worth. I don't really understand this Isar's play. For this to be worth it, they needed multiple kills underneath the mid lane tower. Instead, TT are the ones that show up with the first hand. They throw out the ultimates. They get the crowd control chain down first. And trading a support for a push and that much gold onto their side lanes definitely favors Thunder Talk. There's, a, there's another wave coming in. Sam D's going to get this turret. Xiaopeng's happy to tank it up for oh, now. God. Irma can't stop it. There's a... Tier 2 turret going down with the outer and the bottom lane as well. Damage on the top side and solo lane time for Chalitza. For TT, gold now in their favor. And you can see, better macro wins. Easy clap, you know, 15 in the all chat. So it, it does feel like with the Camille now in a more favorable position, that was such a good trade for TT to take. This was a five-man stack, and what they really needed was the Shockwave plus Udyr combo onto Twilight, but Twilight keeps his distance right here. Xiaopeng comes in and stops most of the aggression, and in the meantime, E-Stars can only focus on a Leona with Aftershock. That's not really the target you want to go for in a tower dive, uh, and they just pay so much for that. That was a... I don't know, that that was a risky macro play where I felt like it wasn't necessary for E-Stars to really pull that off, and they get punished really hard with all the extra gold going over to Sam D. 
Now, Eastar do come back onto the map, and because they're there first, the Herald gets picked up, Clement. But I just want to point out how Eastar, you know, transition the game from here with the second Herald, because you did talk about the scaling element with Zaya, Orianna, and how their comp can execute maybe the front to back, or, or rather the space that can be created from their engage. But in the mid game, talk to me about the transition point, because I, I feel like until you're at those three items, it does become a little bit tricky to halter some of the aggression from TT and manage a lot of these side waves. For E-Stars, they have a very uh, defensive composition in that it doesn't really skirmish or force things particularly well. Okay. There's a lot of champions that can seem very telegraphed. The Udyr, for instance, is always a very telegraph pick because he can only run at you. And the same about the Zaya. Zaya gets the most effect when she can use Blade Caller, and that is predominantly a defensive ability in a team fight. So what E-Stars really need to do is they need to take priority over that Dragon Pit. Now, I okay. like what they did here. They're forced down the mid lane. They have an easy transition in. But as we said, because TT had the first two Drakes, they can decide not to take this fight. They can decide that, hey, you know, instead of going into a 5v5 where you have the compositional advantage, we're just going to force more more gold onto Chalitza. And I like this from TT. This is exactly what they're doing. They're reading their composition win conditions perfectly. They know that Chalitza has no opposition in the split push. And if he yeah. gets ahead, he's going to stay ahead. He's going to have a Ravenous Hydra soon, Clement. He's going to have that those two items that everyone fears facing on a side lane, Camille. TT as well, because they know that E-Star would have backed off, are going to be pushing forward towards mid. After getting top okay. side priority, clearing out some of the vision, they'll get forced away for now, but they're still holding strong and they still got the, what they wanted with giving that solo turret gold to Chalitza, which should get him that Ravenous Hydra on the next back. And as we mentioned, there is a triple AP stack on the top side of the map. It's yep. very, very hard to kill someone who has Mercury Treads and a Ravenous Hydra with Omni Vamp like the Camille when you have triple AP. You, you just don't really have enough damage to kind of burn through all of Camille's defenses at that point. And uh, we also saw E-Stars trying to get the engage into mid lane. It was Hacker using bear form and running up. And let's be honest, that did absolutely nothing. Thunderdock were very easy. Uh, it's just, you know, they were super calm and collected. They're like, oh, it's a man bear pick. They just push him away and they're able to get out scot-free. Yeah, uh, again, telegraph is a word. We're going to probably use a lot in the LPL for the last week. I think especially with Udyr in the meta, you know, being telegraphed is something that... Uh, it, like the Daily Telegraph back in Australia, if anyone knows, you know. You, you read it every day, you see it, and you go, oh, we know exactly what that's going to look like. And the same with Udyr here, who's almost towards the second item. He's going to run fast. We're expecting probably the Dead Man's Plate from the item combination there with the... Uh, winged plate steel caps. Wow, what are we calling this item? The moon plate, moon leg moon. pants, steel cap. Clever, <laughs> what the what the frick is this? It, it's item? called the winged moon plate. Winged Thank moon you plate. so much. Yep. Thank you so much. Again, no problem. You know, new I, got you. I have to play by play these days too, so uh, I do. Get it. <laughs> we got there eventually. It's, it's like me trying to get the frostfire gauntlet, frostfire iceborn, iceborn frostfire gauntlet. You know, right as well. Uh, just speaking of items, before I dig myself into a deeper hole, Ravenous Hydra now picked up that I talked about. But we've also got the Collector for Sam D, who was sitting in the solo lane and has actually got a 30 CS differential over Rats. So a lot of strong points right now, especially with Syndra, who's almost towards her second item as well. Twyla feeling good. It does feel like TT are moving to the mid game as the stronger team, also with the gold advantage. We do see TT going for a lot of backline assassination potential, especially in their itemization. We saw that uh, Sam D actually went for the serrated Dirk, so slowing down his mythic completion just for the extra chance that he was going to get the evolved Q for an assassination onto Rat. And also the Triforce coming out from Cholitza is a very strong signal that the way TT wants to play these team fights is they'll probably send like Xiaopeng and Teen to mess things up, be a diversion, but in the meantime, their real eyes are going to be focused on to Rat and making sure that he doesn't uh, survive uh, too long into the team fights. Because honestly, E Stars do lack a lot of damage if they want this uh, extended fight to go all the way. I did like what E Stars were doing uh, just a little bit a while ago on the map. They were setting mm -hmm. up for an early Baron and hopefully trying to get them into a 5v5 position. But yeah. uh, TT were able to defuse that quite nicely. They were very patient. They sent Chalitza into the bot side, and E-Stars have to respond. And that's why, you know, coming back to the point at hand, while E-Star are trying to look for opportunities, it does feel nice trying to be the proactive team here. And at least, I know they don't have to, Clement, as you talked about before, where they are the team that kind of, kind of play it slow. But 
especially with the two dragons that delay the game with TT getting the priority in these lanes. It does feel like finding more plays in the playbook is a necessary feat. Oh, I also want to come back to the comps quickly while we have this lull state because you talked about Rat being the focus for TT. And it does feel like there are other tools there for Easter to keep Rat safe. It is just kind of more about surrounding Rat being the bodyguards, you know, using stopping Agent 007 in Xiaopeng and making sure that Rat has the space to move. Yeah, what we see is a lot of disengaged tools in the Alistar that can get you out of a Hexec ultimatum if Camille does go in too early. And you also have the explosive cast that can knock back targets. Basically, displacement is super effective against Camille because you can um, basically make sure that your AD carry can walk out of her ultimate unscathed. But for now, I think E-Stars are struggling to find their opportunities to actually group up for the Drakes. Yeah. At this point they don't really have pressure on Drake. Because even if they five-man stack on Drake, TT do not have to respond. TT can say, hey, you know what? You're so far away from that Elder Soul that I'm willing to just go for Silanes again. So E-Stars right now, they're kind of focused on finding a definitive team fight earlier on or just trying to get Baron positioning. I don't think that E-Star is going for uh, Drake right here. Uh, it, it doesn't really mean what it looks like. What they're looking no. for is definitive engage rather than baiting them going towards uh, Dragon. Because well, I, I don't think TT are going to fight. Well, E-Star looking for the Dragon still nonetheless. Shockwave pulls Ooh. in only one onto Sam D. Half health on the AD carry and Hacker gets the engage with the best stance. Onto Xiaopeng, waiting for the Arctic Assault to use it away. That's going to look beautiful. But the explosive cast puts Twyla in a bad position as Chilita helps out his brother. Solar Flare layers down. Hacker gets low. The Unleashed Power does nothing. And that fight ends right there. TT going to pull back at E-Star. Probably going to pick up the dragon. So a small win, however small. But E-Star, they're like, no, no, no. Just wait. Let's go for another time. Yeah, E-Star's composition doesn't really have enough engage tools. They're really good on disengage. But their main, the main power of this composition is if you stack drakes. If you stack drakes, the enemy has to respond to you. They have to walk into oh. you. And that turn okay. would have been a lot more effective. Clement, However, Clement, Baron starting, sir. Baron is starting and it's going down quickly. This is TT's chance if they just take it down. A smite comes through Easter. Slow to the punch. There are ways to get out of the back of the pit. And for one, that trade is giga worth. <laughs> Again, they're trading supports for massive wins on the map. Team is the sacrificial lamb for Thunder Talk. They give his life over the first time. They get two towers in the bot. They give his life over the second time. And they get a free Baron on the map. That just means, you know, split push city for Thunder Talk. They really don't care about the Drakes. E Stars are so far away from Dragon Soul anyway. So, massive win for them. They can play this game however they want to from this point on. Yeah, you got a side lane Camille with Baron, who's up so much CS, who still has those two items. Note that it is the Ionian Boots of Lucidity. What? So, a lot of ability haste instead of going for the safer route in the Merc Treads that you've been talking about all game. And TT going to make a play onto ZS. He's in a bad position with Xiaopeng. Ability to follow. Twyla is on the chase. Arctic Assault once again. Body Slam being blocked. He flashes away. And that summoner down could change the pace of at least the next four minutes of the game for the Gragas. As Chalitza won't be caught out in rotation either. This is where the pressure game really begins for TT. And we just saw Rat having to use his ultimate actually to clear the wave out. Never a good scenario to burn the Feather Storm like that one. And once again, TT are winning all across the map. Chalitza doesn't fall to the gank. They get a flash into the bot lane. Large chunk of damage onto the bot. And E-Stars are getting punished all across the map for not having the engage tools to actually catch out any TT members. Always just getting pulled across so thinly as well. Now towards mid lane, Xiaopeng rotating first. Irma and Hacker are coming in. Has Xiaopeng gone too far? No, he turns around with a Glacial Prison. And it will be the... No, not Mikhail's used. In fact, actually just taken away with the cleanse by Rat. Remember that Shousey, that cowbell, is actually Mikhail's blessing now. So a lot of ways to get Rat out of trouble. He does have one more cleanse thanks to it as well. And that'll keep him safe. But ultimate now used while Chalice is hitting the top side with the Baron buff. Another go tower goes down to Thunder Talk. We have to remember in this early game, E-Stars were actually ahead by 2,000 gold from their laning phase. But that doesn't exist anymore until he's coming in. Oh, that was trying to predict something. It won't really land down as the slow follows suit. Inner turret goes down in the end. And that's really the trade that TT know nothing was given back on the other side. So again, more gold into the back pocket of TT. 28 minutes in the game. 
and Eastar just trying to keep their base intact and get over this surprise Baron take. Even though the Flash did look a little bit weird coming out from Chalitza, he does trade it for Rat's Flash. And as we were talking about the itemization coming out by the Triforce and the Collector, that just gonna is going to mean that Rat is... He's not going to be able to do anything in the next team fight. He doesn't have the summoners to really keep himself alive. So we're, we're going to see how ZS and Irma fare at keeping Rat alive. He does have the most damage on his team. Three items already with the Infinity Edge. But if he falls without his summoners, then E-Stars are going to collapse alongside him. If e star go down, then we got to remember that this could just end in the game as well. Uh, I was just trying to work out what we're going to be looking at next because it is Eastar trying to position for that pick. Use the Udi's mobility and the CC that they have on their team. The Shiasi moving away as well. Sam D just uses the supercharger. Of course, has to move uh, the invisibility now that he has the attack speed with the rapid fire cannon. But what are we gearing up for? Well, two minutes until the next dragon, but Chalitza still bopping hard with the GA in hand. The side lane pressure so much to manage, and it is a slow burn for now. Well, East Star are just trying to keep the minions away from their base. Yeah, and we do see a situation that uh, is slightly more beneficial to East Stars in that they do have staggered timers, so they can focus on the Baron first and then transition over towards Holy the Drake. But uh, wasn't cast ooh. used, but remember that doesn't cancel out the hook shot. So Chalita just walks out and. Another ultimate from ZS that has been Mega. We, we already talked about this top laner. Eastar put the resources into the top lane. So ZS looks good on paper, but he has been underperforming from the expectations as the best top laner from the LDL. It was pretty disappointing this game because they actually threw a lot of different looks at Chalitza. Mm -hmm. And look at him. He's still sitting at 0, 0, 0 Even though this is a super low kill game, all of it comes down to the individual mechanics in the side lane. We saw how many ganks go into top and none of them have been able to get this Camille down. Uh, especially the first gank I thought was such a wasted opportunity when they burned a flash in an ultimate and traded it for absolutely nothing on the Camille. So... Unfortunately for E-Stars, I felt like this game didn't have to go this way, but they just didn't play the mechanics perfectly, and yeah. they allowed Camille to get away with a lot more than she should have been able to. It was the bear stance up in the top lane, the, the early game gank you're referring to, where they didn't even wait for the hook shot to come out before they stunned. They didn't try to interrupt. They just burnt everything like children in a playground wanting to go down the slippery slide. They realized oh. there is an anaconda at the end as team... Almost caught out here by Hacker. Good scout of the week once again. Twile's been hitting those all game long. And E-Star again, just waiting for that pick, trying to pull the initiative. Xiaosi engaging as well, but I think this is a bait from Xiao Peng. He'll arcane shift away, or excuse me, assault. With the Arctic Salt down, Chilita now on the side, and E-Star's had the position for the dragon, but Baron's up in 10 seconds again. I don't think TT mind. Yeah, I, I didn't really like the way that E-Stars played it. The idea was correct to try a fish for a pick around the Baron, but once they didn't get it, I felt like they should have held their ground around the Baron pit rather than go for Drake. Well, fight's going to start out anyway. shouty has gone in alone. He's trying to run away as the Ooh, Unleashed Power is there. Shockwave what? on Irma was a hula hoop, and that was what? just appalling. TT now back to the Baron that burnt the health bars, and E-Star have to make the Hail Mary. Okay, that was a bit of a head-scratcher. Chalitza wasn't even in mid-air, and they still used the Shockwave for absolutely nothing. This is going to be free Baron. Scout of the week again. All right, well, down it goes. And, you know, this game is just... This is happening. And TT getting another Baron. Hacker still here. Flashes away. These... This is the reason why these two teams, especially Eastar, are at the bottom of the barrel. Just messy, uncoordinated play. I feel like I'm hitting a horse that's already got flies and guts coming out of it. <laughs> uh, well, we can go on beating the dead horse because, uh, you know, this is pretty much what this game has been the entire time. We talked about E-Stars when there were staggered objectives. Um, you know, they, they could basically force the Baron to be the focal point of the play, force TT to come to them. Instead, they transition over towards the Mountain Drake. And like we said, because they don't have that Elder Soul point, TT do not have to respond. TT, I think, make the uh, perfect answer right here. They turn around towards the Baron play. They give over another Drake. 
And because ESAR lacks so many engage tools, it's very easy to just kite away from them again and again, force out their ultimates, and take a super safe Baron. Throughout yeah. all that, ESAR didn't manage to even go into River. They actually lost the Baron being stuck on their own blue side ramp. They got poked out. It was Scatter the Week again, and then Hacker still stuck around for too long, not knowing his limits. Shockwave finally going to come through and hit something, but the Glacial Prison's better. Onto Irma in the back line. It's double laying her CC, but Shao Punk, Ooh, way, way too deep. I almost choke on the air, but Chalita going to choke on five members of E-Star. This is the hook shot against the wall. Scatter the Week, explosive cars. Baron's not going to save you as Irma runs over the wall. E-Star want the engage, and they'll find it. The unleashed power only on the one. Whoa. And E-Star are right back, thanks to TT. What did I just watch? Why <laughs> Thunder Tongue? <laughs> oh, save me, Clint. <laughs> oh, they were so far ahead. That was a five for two. This is just Pink League of Legends. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, I've I've what? seen I've seen LCS games better than this, Clement. Definitely seen LCS games better than this. We'll have a look, cause why? I, I'm not sure why. Oh, okay, so let's go through this play again. They use double ultimates on Irma, but there's no follow up, and Shaopung dies instantly. Then Chalitza decides to go in one by one. You know, in Chinese, this is called cooking dumplings because you never throw dumplings <laughs> in the pot together. It cools the pan too early. You throw them in one by one, and they all get devoured by E-Stars. This was just, ah, oh, this was just a throw of epic proportions. Only in the bottom teams of the LPL can you see a throw like this yeah. one. That was... I wanna... I, I, Clement, I want to take it back. You know, NA is a lot better than this, of course. You know, I was a bit rude <laughs> there, but um, second of all, Thank you for the dumpling tips. You know, I'll remember that next time I cook. Third, Easter, with the comp you prescribed, that you said how ha, has the ability to really scale into this game, Zaya, Oriana, and the tools now available with the cowbell still there for Shalsi, this makes it so easy. And they're on Mountain Soul Point. So it does feel like Easter now are in a very comfortable position to get the soul, then threaten at the point of having the elder, and the side lane split push can be managed a lot easier. I feel like I'm losing hair watching this series. I'm pulling on my scalp so hard, you know, because I I, I just can't fathom the plays that I'm witnessing right here. TT, they're, they've been trading away Mountain Drakes this entire game just to get advantages on Chalitza, and when it counts the most, they don't split push. They go into the 5v5 yeah. and die one by one. I'm like, uh, so everything, all those trades they did earlier, it doesn't matter. Because essentially what happens in the late game is that E-Stars suddenly get a free Dragon Soul point. If mm. they snag that one, they can actually just turn this entire game on its head and just win. Yep. <laughs> and hey, you know, a win's a win, oh boys. My. Like, that's what <laughs> we take whatever we can get. This is only game one, and I already feel like my hair has grown 20% thinner since the start. Uh, Shalsi, good dodge away from Scout of the Week. East Star are going to go in for this. Of course, it is Mountain Soul. Let's just get a team fight with only mechanics as ZS is gearing up to go. Hexflash over the wall from team wants to flank with the Solar Flare. Scatter the Week's quite good, Clement, as Xiaopeng starts with the Glacial Prison. ZS gets popped out, Solar Flare onto Irma. Teen engages into the back line. This flank could be beautiful, but Rat is untouched. Just into the back line. Chalisa will find his mark, but Rat, again, you haven't hit this AD carry. Now Sam D has gone too deep with the Killer Instinct. He's one versus three, and each star got the perfect fight because the Zaya, even without a lover, was having a great old time. And this should also mean that E-Stars can walk back and just secure the Dragon Soul. I think Xiaopeng has to stay here. You can't let this go over to TT. You're a composition that relies so much on Burst. If you give a Mountain Soul over, that's a huge shield and so many extra resistances that you're not going to be able to kill Rat and Irma later on. I'm actually surprised that Xiaopeng decides to back here. I feel like this isn't, a, this isn't one of those situations where you have to chance for the steal. Well... You've given over Mountain, whatever the case, Clement, and you've now got six minutes till the Elder. 20, 28 seconds until the Baron comes up as well. And you, you, you left Rat in the fight. You now pay the price. He's 8, 1, and 3. We'll watch it again because there are all these peeling elements. They didn't need to be used for Rat. 
This is where E-Star's composition really shines. They have so him. much disengage, and I love what Rat is doing here. He's just sitting inside the brush. No one's hitting him. He dips outside of Vision to start this one off. And even though they get Irma, Rat is the main damage dealer. He has a CS lead. At this point, I do believe he does. And he has yeah. all the kills on the team, too. So, uh, I... I just felt like this is such a throw from Thundertalk. We have to remember this entire game, Thundertalk realized that their win condition was actually in side lane split push. They were yeah. never in the 5v5 team fight. Well, and then because of that massive throw in the mid, they forced themselves go. to go for it. Here we go. You played Mario Party? You played Mario Party on Nintendo 64? You know the one where you're on the roly poly and there's an electric floor down below? It does feel like whoever is the better at mechanics is going to win, but maybe Easter have rigged the game a little bit. I'm sorry, the chaos has gone to my brain. That is just the away maneuver from Xiao Peng as Baron can be started again. Isar still do this quick, and once they've cleared out the vision, they're ready to pull TT back in. There is zero chance that Rat actually dies in this team fight. Oh, Teen almost dead. Okay, bye Teen. He flashes away. Twyla has teleported in, and he's just running around. Hacker going face first. He has a mountain soul. Does he care? The Hexec Old Man takes him down the Hebat Pulverize. Two-man shockwave, though, and even though TT got the first pick, ZS is absorbing the damage out of the GA. Shalita will walk away with the hookshot walk shot. The QSS used once again, rather cleansed from Rat. The flash burnt on the other side of the scale by Twyla. He gets hit pretty hard by Irma, and you can see why some of the pressure has been used on this mid laner. TT left with two core carries, and that was a pretty good fight considering they shouldn't have gotten anything. Uh, yeah, but you could also tell that E-Stars was willing to throw their bodies in at Thunder Talk with zero regard because they have the Mikhails for the Zaya. The Zaya has the cleanse and the flash up plus the ultimate and the GA. That's just way too much protection for Rat. So they know that they can do like monkey engages and they still will have the <laughs> DPS in the back line to monkey actually win. Engages. That's true. They just ran face first into them because they knew that Rat was never going to die in that team fight. And, yeah, okay. you know, even though it looks like an even trade for TT, we have to look at the summoners there. Twyla expended his flash. Chalitza only got out with his own flash. True. On the meantime, E-Stars kept their flash on Hacker, kept their flash on Irma and Rat. So that wasn't really an equal trade. That was a trade that was very much in favor of E-Stars, and they're just going to run that play again and again. Zenos with his flash almost back up and available. Don't worry about that cleanse. Still a, a reasonable cooldown, but Clement already labeled everything that's going to be available to keep rat alive uh, irma also has the zonya's hourglass plus we wait for that last item but remember the qss can be used on that as well sorry mikhail's i like that Jalitza is going back towards the merch trends oh yeah, god he, he had to his sell boots. his boots of ionia for that <laughs> that was so far ahead and he thought well it's fine you know the ability has no one can match me but now the game has kind of fallen down the toilet and into the pipes tt have decided that you know it's it's going to be the safer option here for the top laner. PT have decided to group up now as well and optimize for the pick. Remember, if they can find Hacker like they did in the last fight, then it is winnable for TT, even with the Mountain Soul. A mistake which this whole series has been about, the explosive cask. ZS. <laughs> oh, no. oh my god, do not play Gragas again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's uh, a little bit tragic. I I'm looking at uh zs's champion pool and this is his Gragas debut so we'll cut yeah, some it slack. and maybe it's the last time we'll see it chakra gonna be used sam d just targeted out that could be the pick that ends all support goes down with him as well with the ship a double kill already and that's just it ladies and gentlemen shalita running for his life he hook shot walk shots over the wall twilight trying to deal with hacker who flashes away but with the dissonance the movement speed the bear is angry he's trying to kite this around there's all you can do this uni mechanics bear stance again twyla thinking about it no he's not gonna go for it all right he starts just gonna walk around the mid lane and hackers still wait we haven't finished part two the roundup twyla's got a cow on him now scatter the week doesn't connect and bam goes golden for the moment and with the phoenix out as well he started ending the game but i don't care i want to see this fight twyla versus hacker and a cow in the middle some kind of kinkiness going on he's got it back in the end and hacker doesn't get the kill but each star can't end the game Twyla either <laughs> oh my God. i can't believe this how how did twyla survive and zs die in that scenario I, the observers couldn't keep their eyes peeled on both positions so we missed out on a lot of action but i'm just so surprised at how that trade went it on there's there's no way that e stars should shouldn't have been able to close that one in you know, they had a two kill advantage. They should have killed the Syndra. Zedas should have been alive, but none of that happens. 
And now we're going to see Thunder Talk actually head towards Baron. What is happening? Oh, my God. Oh, Hacker, run. Hacker no. Don't do the camps, Hacker. There's a Baron Hacker, going on. Baron. He doesn't Baron. have Flash any figures he can't get in at the very least. They're, they're pinging it out. They knew. TT going to get the Baron. It's 43 minutes in. and oh, I, I don't. <laughs> you don't know. Elder oh, up God. in five seconds, Clever. Look at the TP. Uh, this has been so exciting. The game is never over until the Nexus explodes. This is what this series is trying to teach us right here. TT, right towards the Elder Dragon. East uh, not in position yet. ZS hasn't been spotted out until about now. The Body Slam, explosive cast. That wasn't good either, but onto the pit. They want to steal. They walk in. It's taken by Chalitza. Elder now secured. The Zenith Blade doesn't connect, but they execute the Mad oh, Cow. The Shouty drops down. Chalitza finding the Dream Engage. That's going to be three. He'll die in the end. Teen is close to death too. Rat trying to carry the fight in with the Elder, but Twyla comes in clutch. The Unleashed Power already used. The Scatter the Weak, and TT wipe them off the floor. I think this is finally going to be the end. A 44-minute epic slog between these two teams. You know, honestly, this game one is all about snatching victory away from the jaws of defeat. Am I saying that in the right order? Yes. Because I, I feel like my brain is melting just watching this game. Yeah. Like, E-Stars could have finished that oops, yeah. like two minutes ago. <laughs> Well, up to the, up to the Nexus. Look at Shousey's death timer. Look at everyone else. I think they can end the game, Clement. It's eight they seconds until Shousey comes up. Twilight does so much with the Elder. Don't walk away, sir. He kind of uh, stutter stepped a little bit too far, but it might not matter. Nexus is going to be laid bare. The Glacial Prison misses. Unleash power used once again onto Shousey. He ain't tanky enough for the Elder. And TT somehow, some way, win that cluster of a game one. Oh, I don't know what to say about that one. Both of these teams...